Okay, welcome everybody. Hello everybody. We're just gonna wait just a little bit longer to get everything situated, get everybody online and start with our Facebook Live. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're about ready to start. So hello everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Welcome to the Vision X Live 2021 uh, live event conference. This is the first one. We're very excited. Uh, for us, this is one of three. So we're going to be doing one event every day. And they're all going to kind of fit together. So for this particular one, we're going to be doing why copper and is all copper made the same. So my name is Anton O'Hanlon. I'm uh, the owner of Artifacts Art. And today we have Olga Kremon. Olga, thank you so much for joining. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. It's very exciting to talk to you. Of course, Olga has a large volume of work on copper. Uh, she has a lot of experience working on copper. And in fact, she actually did a, another talk about two hours ago at three o'clock on Friday, which is today, where she talked a little bit about her technique. So I actually suggest doubling up on these two, two events. So either do it before or after. Maybe I'll wait for uh, one of you guys to tell, let me know what, what's better, if it's uh, to, to watch this one first or the, or the one before that. But Olga has, been, uh, has worked on copper for a long time. And in fact, she was a feature artist for us in the month of March. We do feature artists every month where we choose different artists that, that like different kinds of panels that we make. And then we talk to them about how that, those panels uh, work for them, why they like those panels, and kind of how that affects their artwork. So you can check that out on our website. There's a featured artist page on there. And of course, you can also go to our social media where we have for a whole month, we have pictures of her work, time lapses, and then her talking about working on panels. Now, before we start, I wanted to show you um, the best way to view this particular uh, event if you're on, if you're on uh, Zoom would be to go to the view at the top right hand corner and then go make sure it's side by side speaker. So that way you can see both me, you can see Olga as, as we're talking about, about certain things about copper. And of course you can see our moderator who will have different visual props on there where it's easy to see what we're talking about to kind of as we're talking about it. So, um, so I think uh, Olga, thank you so much for being here once again. The easiest way to start this conversation, I think, is to talk about what, where copper started from. So I'm going to be doing a lot of the talking in the beginning. And then as we progress through the different, different copper, understanding different things about copper, uh, we'll have more direct questions for you, Olga, and, uh, and you'll be more involved. So, but throughout the process, please, if you, if you have any, anything to add uh, with your experience, we'd, uh, we'd love to hear it. So uh, the first thing I'd like to start with is, of course, the origins of copper. And Copper has been used as support since the beginning of 16th century uh, and by master artists such as Rembrandt. So you're in good company we're working with uh, on copper. There's lots of examples of copper. And in fact, if you go to, um, to most museums, you'll find works on copper. So for instance, uh, uh, you know, uh, with many, many artists. So the, one of the things about, about copper is that, is that old masters would use copper a lot, but a lot of times they use smaller copper plates. And that's because in their manufacturing, of course, the larger you'd get, it'd get really heavy. It's a, it's, a, it's a metal. So they anecdotally understood that copper is a good surface to paint on because it doesn't warp, it doesn't bend. You don't have to restretch it. There's some innate problems that you find in other surfaces are mitigated. Uh, so they understood anecdotally, though they didn't have any scientific proof of showing that why, you know, why copper is maybe better than wood. So the way they actually approached copper is that they would cover the entire surface of the copper plate with either a lead oil ground or a lead white and then paint on top of that and use the copper as just as a support, as a good support, as a good foundation for your artwork. Now, of course, that brings, brings the question a lot now, especially this is something that we get questions about a lot is, uh, is well, if I'm just painting on lead, why don't I just paint on an ACM panel, which we have available now that has a lead, lead covering on it, right? And so I think that's a great question for artists as you're starting to explore and listen about copper and possibly want to try it out, try copper. Um, something to think about is that, you know, if are you doing it for historical purposes? Or you, maybe when you're talking to your collectors, you can say, you know, there's lots of examples of copper panels that have lasted 400 years, really well preserved. So is that is that the direction you want to go in historically? in that way, or is it just a good surface if that's what you want to do? Um, or, is it, or is it maybe just easier to move on to a different kind of panel that has similar properties of not expanding contracting, such as ACM panels? Now, most artists, for instance, like Olga, 
uh, which, which her work on copper panel is literally one of my favorites. We try to feature it as much as we can on our social media. But of course, she uses it not as particularly just a support, even though it is a good support. She uses it almost as a feature in our artwork where the copper comes through and, and, and you know, maybe is, is shining through in certain areas. A lot of the copper is exposed. It's a really beautiful technique. And, I, and we're seeing that a lot. So it's, it's a little different from when historically it was used. And of course, some artists maybe use it in a little bit of different way. They'll use it almost as an undertone. So almost as a tone surface to where they'll paint very thinly and have that copper come through through the background. So these are all different ways of, of, of how coppers can be, can be used. And of course, that's how Olga uses it. Um, I will talk later on as I'm explaining about the copper panels about what, uh, what benefits and how you, should, how you should prepare your copper panels and then deal with them afterwards for best, 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 uh, best results. But that's, that's the basic origin of, of copper. So throughout the time, there's been 400 years of ebbs and flows of some people liking working on copper, some people, some people stopping using copper. And of course, as new materials came in, it kind of went out of fashion. But what we're seeing with our company and, and, uh, and so a lot of artists that are around us, they really like the copper surface. And it, and it adds a little bit of something different to, uh, uh, to their work. So um, the next, so now that we know where, where the uh, copper panels are coming from, let's talk about some of the copper panels that are, are available that a lot of artists can see. And I know that Olga actually worked with a lot of these and I think it would be nice to, to hear from her a little bit about the different, the different kinds of copper panels. But over here, I wanna show you some of the most more common uh, copper um, surfaces that you see. So um, you see at the very top there is a copper plate so the copper plate, um, you can find that it's usually a one millimeter thick or a little thicker. Uh, it's a little heavier. It's a heavy duty uh, copper alloy. Um, it's all three of these are all copper. It's just, it just depends on the thickness and the, uh, and the weight uh, of, the, of the surface. So the second one you see there is a copper panel. This is a copper composite panel. This is one of ours, a picture of one, one of those. I have one right here as well. What this is, it's, it's a copper veneer on top. Then there's a polyethylene core, which is like a sandwich, like a, like a, like a plastic polyethylene core sandwich. And on the back, you're actually seeing an aluminum surface. So what this does is it's a copper veneer. The polyethylene reinforces that. So it's, it's sturdy. It's not going to bend. It's not going to be flexible. And then the aluminum protects the back of the panel from any moisture that can come through into, into it and, and uh, corrode or oxidize the surface. The third one you see there is a copper sheet. Uh, those, a lot of times they come in coil. Sometimes they're called copper foil. Sometimes they're called copper coil sheets. Now those are, 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 are fairly common. They're very thin. And so they're easy to, to cut yourself and to make your own surfaces in that way. In fact, I have an, a, a, a work here. This is by Patricia McMahon Rice on copper. She works on, on something like this. She now works mostly on our copper panels, but this is something that she's used before as well. Um, so you can see it's very thin. The only problem with these is, of course, because it's so thin, it's very malleable. So it's not very rigid uh, and not a very rigid painting support. So one of the problems, in, in with, if you ever worked with metal, you can't really get metal straight once it's bent. Okay, So if you bent it like this, then you bent it like this. So maybe you could even it out, but really you're just making a wave on, 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 the, on, the, on the surface. right? And then especially if you have a painting on it already, trying to, the best way to flatten it would be to roll it out. You don't want to be putting all that pressure on the panel to roll it out. So that's one of the things about copper, copper foils or copper, um, or copper, copper sheets like that. Now, copper ACM panels or copper composite material panels and, uh, and sheets of copper such as, such as this, okay? There's, they look very similar except for this one's a little thicker. The other difference is that this one is quite a bit lighter. So for, for reference, a nine by 12 panel of, a, of an artifacts copper panel is about 12 ounces. A copper sheet that's about one millimeter thick is about one pound and 12 ounces. So more than double of what, of what a copper artifacts copper panel would be. So that's something to, to think about old masters. That's why they use, they do work small because obviously there's quite a bit of constraint working large. Uh, if you're working large in a copper panel, it makes kind of easier to think about about if you're going large that to to use like a artifacts copper panel because it's not going to be quite so bulky quite so heavy and also has a protective backing on the back 
So that's all the copper panels are right now that are all copper alloys that you can use use today, and they all have their different advantages uh, for for you know for different projects. So let's next look at uh, some of the uh, some of the other panels that we have here uh, that are not actually copper. Now, of course, we do a lot of our research. We get a lot of samples of different pro copper products. Uh, so you know, we we try to do all, a lot of this this footwork for you. But this is something else that you might find. This is a copper. You, it looks kind of like a, just a copper sheet, okay? But on, upon closer inspection, you can see that as soon as you scratch up the very top layer, that it comes through as aluminum. So this surface is actually an aluminum sheet that has an anodized copper either sprayed on. It could even be paint sometimes. But for this particular one, it's actually copper, but it's a very, very thin sheet of copper that's on top of it. Okay, so these, these kind of materials are not really recommended to paint on, though they are out there. And in fact, there's actually ACM panels that have all different kinds of surfaces on them that may look like metallic, may look copper, may look red, white, whatever it is, right? So it's not actually copper. So that's something to watch out for, um, especially if you're doing it yourself or making yourself. Uh, just, just know that there are a lot of different, different surfaces out there. And now that I've actually said one word, I'm going, to, I'm going to define ACM, which is aluminum composite material panels. Some of you might not be familiar with that. That's, that's what stands for these, uh, these sheets of aluminum, polyethylene core, aluminum. Same with a copper, which is a CCM, which is copper, polyethylene core, aluminum. Okay, so now that we have fake copper, we have real copper. Let me go on to the, one a very common question that we get, which is a, uh, which is a patina copper. Um, and I'm not sure, Olga, if you had if you have any interest or if you had any friends that have talked asked you about patinaed copper. Um, but it's a it's a question that we actually get quite a bit is uh, people asking us, can I patina my copper because I want this look, or can I somehow somehow have my painting patina over time as part of the effect of the of the copper panel? Um, and as a rule of thumb, the first thing we say is patinas are not good because it's oxidation of the surface. And the, and the place that we're always coming from as a company is just, is just our, our policy is that we want to increase longevity of your work, right? So we want to make sure that you have all the tools and all the knowledge to make sure that your work lasts as long as possible. And patina is unfortunately, because we can't control for that, we can't really control that. So that's, that's why, as a, as a rule of thumb, we don't recommend it. Now, I did want to talk about in this, in this particular image here where it says fake patina right here, this is a actually an aluminum panel with a patina copper look on top of it. Okay, um, that's no not there's no patina at all on this. They just make it look like this, right? So, so that's something to avoid, of course. Now there are patina surfaces of copper. So this is an actual copper panel here. You can see this is a copper polyethylene core copper panel, and it's been it's been uh, has has acid on it that oxidized the surface and created patina on top of it. Then they cleaned it off and retarded the the, the process of, of of the patina. It is something once again we still continue to not not recommend it. It's not something we sell, but of course you know this is not to say that the only thing that matters is the longevity of your work. There are other factors that can come in, and if that's if the patinas are part of your your practice, and that's what you want to explore, that's a possibility. So there are you know there are ways of doing this. It's just as a rule of thumb for us, we won't ever recommend that for you because yes, you know, that's our our idea of, of where we're coming to uh, for supports is that it needs to be the best foundation for your artwork to last the longest in that way. The last thing I'm going to talk about copper before we we we. Uh, we bring on uh, Olga and, and talk a little bit more in depth about, about the, uh, the techniques of copper. Uh, I think the, the question that gets asked a lot is about varnishing and how to varnish, uh, and then just all the questions involved with that. Now, before I talk about varnishing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring on the, the three different ways that you can paint on copper safely. Okay, So number one is what I talked about earlier, is covering the entire copper surface with a lead oil ground or, or, or a uh, lead oil paint. That's gonna be the most archival. So that's the best practices. If you're asking me just for, for archival purposes, that's gonna be the best, best practice. And of course, after that, then you varnish the whole painting. Guaranteed to last a long time. Okay, that's, that's, that's proven. That's why we have a lot of examples of. Now, the second step would be if you wanted to use it like Olga does, wanted to use it as a feature, what you wanna do is you wanna clean out the surface, paint, and then you absolutely have to varnish your painting. And I, I, I want to stress that 
really, really to, to, to varnish your paintings because I know that some artists don't like to varnish their paintings at all. So if you're painting on other surfaces, that's, that's a preference thing. I would say for copper, it's not a preference thing. It's a, it's a requirement to, to, to varnish your copper because copper can oxidize over time. So it's really important to varnish it afterwards. There's lots of different kinds of varnishes you can use. The one that we always recommend is the Rublev Conservar Acrylic Varnish. It's made by Natural Pigments. It's actually designed specifically for copper. The only caveat I would say for that particular varnish is that it's, you need to make sure to wait six months before you varnish. And the reason I'm going to tell you this is because, uh, is because uh, copper, unlike other supports, let's say your acrylic grounds, your canvases, anything else like that, those you, know, you go through a process of mechanical bond, right? So the oil and the paint actually goes inside the pores and creates a, a bond, mechanical bond that way. On copper, it's a non-absorbent surface. So, so the oil doesn't go actually through the, through the, the canvas or anything like that. It stays on top, which you know, means that the, the oil paint dries really quickly. It also means that there's less adhesion in the, in the beginning because there's nothing for it to go into. So as it's drying, it's really, really important to not put a solvent, right? Because that's what varnishes have in them, a solvent that could delaminate the surface or have problems over time for that. So that's, that being said, those, the third way of doing it is of course, sanding, sanding the panel. Some people don't like the shine, but they still like the soft copper color. And you can sand the surface of the copper, paint, and then make sure to varnish. Now, I would say that's going to be the least, the least archival way of, of, of painting on copper, because once you sand it, then you're introducing a whole bunch of other uh, different variants into the copper surface. But no matter what, you need to make sure to clean out the surface before you paint on it, and then varnish, no matter what, what style of paint, uh, no matter how you, you get the panel ready for painting, that's the most important thing. So now, let's talk about, about moving on to varnishing. In the picture you see here on the left where it says varnished and unvarnished, there is actually, there's one that's missing, but there's four different passages of different, four different kinds of varnishes that, that have all been put on a copper panel. And where you see the brown bands, that's when it's unvarnished, okay? Now, this is a five-year test where we put this particular panel outside, facing up, uh, in the sun with UV, UV, UV rays and, and rain, snow, dust, everything going on top of it, right? So of course, this is not the life of your painting. Let's hope, I mean, I don't know, but, uh, but hope, let's hope that that's not how, how your paintings are treated. And of course, this, this bring, uh, make sure that you don't, you may use copper for murals. It's not gonna be the best. But in this, just in this, in this iteration, this, this small test that we have here, you can see that varnishing is very important for accelerated age testing. And so this is, uh, this is a pretty clear example. You see where the brown, that's oxidation. Uh, it's, a, it's a dark patina. That's what happens when it's, when it's uh, exposed to rain, lots of UV and lots of, lots of, uh, lots of dirt and uh, things like that. So that's basically the, the main parts of, of, the, of the copper, uh, copper panels that, that we want to cover. There's a lot more information on the website. And uh, if you have any other questions, like I said, there's a, uh, going back to Olga's featured artist page. She, she talks a lot about copper. So I think we're on to uh, talking to Olga. Olga, thank you so much for hanging tight there for a second. Thank you. <laughs> um, no, I, I, you know, at least I, I confirm that I'm, I'm good. I, I, uh, I'm using it right so far, so. Good, good. And yeah. it was a trial and error, but I mean, you know, I always come to you and to George to, uh, to ask questions, so yeah. wanna make sure. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I, I think that's a very healthy thing to do because I think most artists should as, because there's not as much education on it and some companies aren't as open about, about talking about their materials. I think it's important for artists to, to make a precedent like that, to ask their, about, ask about their materials, what's the proper use of their materials. Um, and that, that, that way their craftsmanship goes up, you know, I, I think, I think there's going to be less problems with the materials themselves as well, because the artists aren't using them in a way that, that they might not mm -hmm. have been uh, meant to be used, right? And so I think you have been a great example of that for us as well, that you, you always have a, a good communication. You're constantly asking different questions. And uh, you've been great. I mean, the only uh, the only thing and, and we kind of talked about it as well. And I'm sure everybody on the call feels the same. It's it's very hard to wait for six months to varnish, Absolutely. I mean, especially on the thinly painted uh, you know, panels. They're dry as it can be. But and you have to send it to a gallery like it's very hard to 
to wait. It's almost impossible to wait for that long, but I've never had issues. So, yeah, that's that's a great point. That's actually a very common uh, common thing I, I uh, we we deal with. Um, you know, what's best practice and what's what's actually possible, right? Uh, we deal with a lot of gallery artists with lots of different timelines. You know, most most of the time they're on really tight deadlines where in, in a month or two they have to already send it out. So, and you know, there may be used to certain certain techniques that might not work for proper. And so that's that's part of part of the um, part of why we, we we try to put out as much information as possible on there. So, um, the first question I have for you was: You have a formal art education, and uh, how much emphasis was put on the tools you used during your education, uh, during your art education? And was there a specific class dedicated to understanding these materials for you? Um, yeah, the short answer is no, and I was actually. I'm almost laughing um, when I'm asked this question because uh, my formal education was in Russia. Uh -huh. and it was hard enough to find any materials, right? Right, right. I mean, you had to know somebody who knew somebody in Leningrad, right? But um, so no, no, the emphasis was on uh, building the skill, bu building the, you know, the drawing, the, uh, you know, the compositional uh -huh. elements, you know, we, we had that. We never actually spoke about materials. I mean, I, I never even heard copper mentioned uh -huh. uh, before. Um, and then here, you know, when I started with Glenn Orbick and then with Jeremy Lipking, I mean, the emphasis was only on, you know, the best linen I can find, you know, the best linen panels and the brands of oil paints. Again, there was no conversation that I ever had about copper at right. the time. Yeah, That's a, yeah my follow-up question was, of course, did you hear about copper during the education, or was it more something you found out later, later much later on in your uh, in your career? It was much later. Actually, it was fairly recent. And I I mentioned it two hours ago, and mm -hmm. uh, since that demo that I just had, I went back and I looked at when I purchased my panels for the first time, and turns out it's two thousand sixteen. Uh -huh. And I remember distinctly that it was about, it, there was an article, either Candice Bohannon or Julia Reyes, one of them uh -huh. had an article about uh, painting on copper and it was about sanding. And this is what I did. I got the etching plates mm -hmm. uh, and I sanded them and then I uh, rubbed them with garlic because mm -hmm. that's what the article said. Right, it right. smelled really horrible, but um uh, but at the time, I did not think about exposing any surface because the surface did not look, um, you know, like anything to me. I uh -huh. just, I was just trying to use a different material. But that's pretty much, that's pretty much when I, I, I heard before that there was, you know, the old masters mm -hmm. movement years ago. Um, you know, Rembrandt was using them, but I mean, it was in my art history education, and I just right. kind of put it on the shelf, but no, I never, I never heard, I never heard anything about it. Yeah, I always like asking this question. I think, um, you know, we, one, one of the things that we do is we do as much testing as possible. We try to partner with galleries or museums, conservation artists, just try to get as much information as possible to artists um, to improve their craftsmanship. But of course, you know, I, I, I think it's, it's uh, as artists, you, you probably keep your artwork for you know five percent of its lifetime, most likely a very small percent of the lifetime. So it's always about it's all the craftsmanship of the artist, whether they you know they want to create the best the best uh, best thing that they can, not just not just the idea, but also the creation itself that you know lasts as long as possible. But also the museums or collectors or whoever whoever's going to end up with your painting, I think it's important for them as well uh, to because because whatever feeling they got when they first saw it. If they want to pass it on, or they want to see it in twenty years, the idea would be that they want to they want to have that same feeling. And so it's um, it's we're we're always interested in, in understanding who is out there teaching, uh, who and uh, these about materials and understanding what is uh, um, how to improve that improve the uh, the artist uh, education on that. So I always I'm always interested to to, to hear that. So. Um, so you, you, you talked a little bit about the first time you used copper. Uh, what was your experience like when you very first, if you could go back to 2016, do you remember that, that first experience you had on copper and, and uh, kind of what, what was the uh, first lesson you learned from that? Um, so I'm going to admit uh, talking about the sanded copper because that's a completely different experience. Sure, sure. So when I stopped sanding and I just started to work directly at that time on the etching plates, uh -huh. um, 
very it's the surface is so smooth there is no tooth so i had to really apply paint several times mm -hmm. and then i realized i'm probably uh thinning it too much so mm -hmm. i eventually moved into like like what i discussed two hours ago i am i was not adding anything i was not doing any washes i literally just took uh mostly and maybe that's why i start with opaques when i work on copper because mm -hmm. you know the driest you know the driest uh paint that i can put on the brush and i just sort of uh start to apply it to the surface and sometimes i had to go over and over uh the mm -hmm. same area several times to 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 let it stick got it got it very interesting. I, I heard uh, in your last last discussion, I heard you talking about some of the techniques that you had, some some of the scratching and different things that that you said that were unique to working on copper. Um, and I found I found that very interesting because um, obviously I you know I, I'm in the manufacturing and the, in the testing of the materials, and it's really really interesting to to, to hear about how artists are using that. Um, and I, along those lines, um, has has your technique significantly changed, or does it significantly change when we work on copper? And has it changed? Has it taught you something that for other surfaces that you're working on now, even though even though it's it serves a little different, but maybe maybe it's something else that you, you added on to your repertoire? Um the way, yes, uh the way I work on copper is very different. Like I like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. it's very different from the way that I approach canvas. Mm -hmm. Uh I love the fact that I don't have to uh tone the canvas or the panel at all it's already right. toned for me i love love the way you know the warmth of it and that against the skin tones especially when i move you know cool uh cool it off to uh, to move it away from me i love how it you know juxtaposes the copper mm -hmm. um i found that um I experiment so much more and maybe because, uh, you know, the original panels I got were so much smaller and it's mm -hmm. so much easier to just kind of doodle on them. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the work started to become almost whimsical. Like if you see some of the earlier uh, works, you know, mm -hmm. I would and I would let myself just go. You know, I would start with a head, you know, either from a model or from a reference. And then all of a sudden, you know, I start to just sketch, just like I would do with a pencil. I mm. felt much more free to do that for some reason on copper, mm -hmm. um, because, like I said, it it, it was almost a, a medium between painting, painting, and drawing. So mm -hmm. I could combine two, you know, both worlds. Um, I would say, and I, I, like I said, I worked on the etching plates before. Uh, the shine of it was actually a problem. It, it's mm -hmm. beautiful when the painting is done, but it was very hard on the eyes. Of so course. one of the things that I love about yours is it's actually a matte surface. It, it, mm -hmm. it is shiny, but it's not shiny to, into your face. Right, right. Um, the other problem I used to have was um, uh, the, the panels would come already scraped and tarnished and they were just not perfect. So. Right. So again, like my previous experiences aside, uh, now that I work with your panels, I like I said, I, I'm trying to experiment with things that are more drawing like and, mm -hmm. and, and try to sort of let the brush sort of make the marks. It's, it's mm -hmm. much more about making the marks than anything else, just like I would do with uh, not even the pencil, but more of a mm -hmm. pen, because again, it's very hard. I, I'm trying not to erase anything or uh, sure. remove anything because then the surface changes so much. Sure. And that risk taking is really kind of like, uh, uh, in, you know, like calligraphy drawing almost uh, mm -hmm. effect for me, but I can still build the layers. I can build those um, hatchings on top of each other and I can get some of that surface to shine through. I don't really do that on my canvas. Uh, uh, paintings on canvas. I don't do that. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't noticed that. Yeah, one of the benefits of of uh, having you as a featured artist is I, I got to saw for a whole month. I got to see your work basically every day, and that was that was really 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 interesting because uh, because you do have uh, some different kinds of things that you do, like some of your portraiture or or uh, um, you know uh, paintings are a little are are different than some of like the mo mo most recent one that I saw with some of the flowers that you had was just it looked like you approached it differently it was so beautiful it was just uh, uh it seemed like you were able to, to do your 
I don't know if you're exploring or not, but it was just something different than, than what I saw before. I think you're always exploring. Even that hatching, it just sort of started to happen. And, and I'm very interested to see how others are using it. I always want to kind of get a feel of what I can, you know, what I can use and what I can experiment with. But it, it's almost like you just let it go. I mean, the hardest thing, especially, you know, after the academic training, it's very mm -hmm. hard to like turn that off. Mm -hmm. and, and just let go. I loved how Quang Ho was talking just an hour ago. And he's like, you just, you just have to let it out there. And, and sometimes for us, it's the hardest thing. Right. It has to be this way. It has to be, you know, the shadows has, have to be transparent, have to be flat. Like I was mentioning before, right. all of a sudden on copper, the shadows have the, uh, you know, the hatchings, they have the uh, plate shining through, you know, I love also with copper that um, the value of the background changes. If I expose the background, right? I have some paintings right. where I don't expose this much, but if right. I expose it this much in a different light, it's almost like a different painting, you know? And the skin mm -hmm. might look so white compared to it in the darker environment. And then all of a sudden it might be a reverse. So like, I love that it's, it's changing, so. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, you know, this is another question I, I'm, I'm interested in is, does it, do you have to do some different things in terms of how it's presented in terms of the lighting, um, you know, because, mm -hmm. because the copper, I mean, I don't know if you've thought about this, but, but I just, I, you know, just you talking kind of seems like it changes in different, in different ways. And I wonder if uh, that's, if that's something, uh, something you think about. Uh, you know, it's more for the galleries, I think, because, you know, once I send it out, it has to be displayed there. My problem is taking reference photos because mm. I can never really take a good reference photo. It's almost like I have to take a video every time, mm. you know, because in a different light or even when I'm in front of it, it, it mm -hmm. might have, you know, a little bit of a reflection of me, which mm. I love when I'm close to a painting and I sort of see my reflection and I kind of become part of that painting in a way. I love that. But when I take a reference photo, I, I have a hard time. So um, so I have not experimented in displaying it as much as uh -huh. I'm trying to find the right lighting and the right way of taking references. Got it. Well, that, that was a, a great, great answer to that. Um, can you discuss some of the difficulties you encountered with copper you know, now that you have five years of experience? Uh, can you discuss more like the, uh, the things that are that are specifically harder for you to, to for the transition. And again, I'm only gonna be talking about artifacts panels because sure. you know, the experience is different. Um, uh, so, so, so in terms of working on them, I am very conscious again, you know, it's a risk every time you make a mark, that's mm -hmm. your last mark for me. Right, right. Unless you keep working and you're covering the surface. If you're exposing the surface, you have to be careful. Um, and also in terms of touching it with your hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. During, yeah, during the, uh, the work, but also after, you know, there were several times when I had somebody looking at my pieces that were stored well, but then somebody would like leave a little mark on it because it was yeah. drying it was not finished painting and like and there's always a way there's always a way to add paint and you know but that changes your composition so mm -hmm. so that was uh, you know that was hard um framing for one you know the frames the traditional frames i was used to had a little bit of that leaf but that mm -hmm. leaf did not match the color of you know the tone of it uh-huh uh-huh so then can you you know, can I have this metal with this? I'm still experimenting with that. And also if it's not a, um, uh, if you're not exposing the edges, right? If it's not a floater, then if you use a frame, the frame might leave a little mark on the copper itself over time. So mm -hmm. I'm very conscious, with, you know, with that um, as well. Uh, but again, it's only if you expose this much. Sure. You know, I'm, you know, starting to expose less and less, maybe. Um, I used to, again, I'm not going back to the panels, but if you are trying to get those cheaper etching panels, they warp, you know, mm. and I used, you know, I used small ones and even them, if I had them without the frame, they would start to eventually, and you have to put a, you know, weight on it. 
Uh, these panels, the artifacts, they 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 don't because of that aluminum backing. It's it, you know right. it's a perfect thing. The price, yes, you're paying for these panels. The, these are premium panels, um, but but again, that's just the cost of doing business. Um, um, I, I think I mentioned you have to be very careful in the way you store them, in mm -hmm. the way you store your paintings, and uh, even the dust. You might you might see some of the particles. Mm -hmm. When you varnish, you have to be, you know, sure the surface is clear right. Right. because every little thing will show. Um, uh, but also the actual panels before you paint on them. There was a time when I, I put something on them and the mm -hmm. corner of it sort of made a mark on the panel. So I, I'm very careful. I'm almost like jewel like I, I keep them very safe and I'm, sure. you know, I'm trying to do my best with them. And then making sure that I always varnish on time and uh, and everything. I I, I I would say I would say those are my main my main thing. And and then when you work, if you have a lot of light coming, again, it might be hard on somebody's eyes working mm. with a shiny panel. But mm. you get you get used to to it very quickly. And these are much more matte than 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 I used to have. Sure. Yeah, I, I like what you said about the gloves. That's 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 a big one for us here during manufacturing, of course, is we have to be very careful before we get it to you that we never touch the surface. Mm -hmm. Very clean, mm -hmm. everything, everything's as 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 clean as possible. And then of course, under on, on the warping part of it, um, most of that comes from because the panels are pretty heavy, those etching plates. So usually it's when you store them, if you're just storing on one corner, it will actually sag under under its own weight. And so that's right. That's right. So that's why um, a, that's why we settled on the ACM panels uh, or CCM panels in this in this case in, in general is because of that for almost any surface is that you know the heavier it gets the more the more it, it, it runs into problems with sagging like that. So those are great those are great great answers for for some of the things that people might might encounter for um, you know right when they start start painting on top of them before they they even embark on this. So um, most of your work is now prominently features copper panels. Uh, is that deliberate? Uh, is that something you like being known for? Or is that just an addition to the painting surfaces you already use? Um, yeah, can you elaborate on if, if you are now just a copper painter or if you or if you anticipate that this is this is gonna be just folded into what you're already doing? Um, I would say I, I will never stop painting on linen. You know, mm -hmm. I I love it. It's a completely different experience and right, right. I it's it's my thing. But copper is also my thing. It's almost like it's it's a way for me to get away, and it's a way for me to to change up. Because when I'm in front of the copper panel, I'm changing how I work and what I do and and what I can create. So mm -hmm. I have to go back and forth. I come here and then I start missing linen. I go to linen. I start missing copper. So it's always going to be together. And uh, you know, certain things just come with you know, experimentation like that, hatching and scraping. And, and and like I mentioned before, and if you were not here a couple of hours ago, never scrape the actual surface. Yes. Just scrape the oil on top of it, be very, very careful. I'm, I'm really trying not to touch the surface at all. But all of that, just, I, I feel like, no pun intended, but I'm scraping the surface here because there's so much more to, to be done. Like, I feel like, what if I, you know, smooth smooth it down with even with the finger? What happens? Mm -hmm. What if I, you know, I started to use nails? I I started to use some, you know, paper to make some effects. You know, even that uh, uh, thing that I said you cannot, uh, you know, remove it safely without Gamsol. It, it changes the, uh, the 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 surface quality. Well, what if I play with that? You know. Sure. Uh, what if you incorporate, I'm just like thinking in, out loud, but what if you can leave on top of it? What if you paint on it and, and, and you can actually apply some other metal on top of it? I have no idea, mm -hmm. but there's just so much, so much to be done. Uh, and then uh, lately, like I, I've done a couple of works where I literally, uh, you know, covered it with, you know, I had a, uh, a oil on top. But then I started to really deliberately scraping almost tunnel-like um, lines through it. Mm -hmm. It's drying right now, but I mean, and it's a completely different feel. 
Like, mm. I just feel like there's so much, there's so much to do. And I'm not, I'm not conscious of, and never being conscious of, this is my style and this is going to be it. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll always just, you know, if you want to do something completely different, you know, maybe your gallery will not take that, but you have to get it out of, sure. of your brain to get it, to just get it done. Just, just do it. Just get the panel and, and, and just experiment. Um, I did try to experiment with uh, oxidizing it with uh -huh. the light acid. And then I contacted you guys and they, you said, no, like over time, it's not going to work. Just like you said, the patina, it was yeah. a beautiful patina, but I can't, if it's not going to last, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that. Hmm. And as an exploration, it might be something interesting, you know, and, uh, and like, like you said, you know, I, I think a lot of, a lot of artists, the reason I ask you this question is because most of our artists don't don't use copper exclusively, right? They use it as uh, what for whatever project they need, or maybe they have a special idea that the copper is, is really nice for them. And so in that way, I think copper is, it might not be, you know, for your everyday kind of thing that you're gonna be using or everything that you're using it for, but it might be something interesting that you try out and use as, a, as a, an alternative uh, to, to, to certain projects. And I, uh, I think most, most artists uh, that work on our panels see it that way as well, so. Um, I was also thinking, uh, you know, what if creating a painting that is consisting of small panels, you mm -hmm. know, but all together, it is a large composition, but each of them is an abstraction, which is a sort of a, mm -hmm. you know, a little piece of it. Like, uh, there's so many things that you can do probably, we just can't think of it. Yeah, there's an artist that uh, from Montana, her name is Paula Evans. She, uh, she's working on a project. I'm not, I, I'm not sure how much I can say about the project. I don't think she's finished with it yet, but, but she, she's doing something like this thing where, where there's a lot of copper panels uh, and it's all put into, into one okay. really huge, huge project, but I'll definitely connect you and show you some, some of the work. Uh, Please, yeah, that'd be great. For inspiration purposes. And, um, um, we have a couple other questions um, that other people have asked. So uh, Kang asked, is, isn't oil an ACM? Uh, aluminum just as archival as copper? The answer is yes, Kang, of course. Um, so that, that's, that kind of goes back to what I originally originally said. Painting on ACM panels um, is, is very archival, just in fact, in some ways more archival than copper because it's not gonna oxidize in the same way. Um, it's, it's important to, to find the right kind, of cop, uh, right kind of ACM panels. So in fact, we actually don't recommend painting directly on aluminum, okay? So aluminum is not a good surface to paint on directly. Even though there are some some um, uh, some people talking about painting directly on aluminum panels, that's not something we recommend. And we have some research showing that actually we're in the process of of, of showing showing uh, why this is not a good idea. Uh, but anyways, um, ACM panels with a with a uh, with a lead oil ground on top of it or a canvas on it, which is what we sell in, in some of the other panels, uh, is a great surface and it's just as archival as as copper. Even though we don't have examples of it because of course aluminum is a more more um, uh, more modern support, but we do have accelerated age testing, which shows which shows that that aluminum uh, panels uh, or uh, paintings done on aluminum plasma material panels with a surface on top of it are very archival and can last a really long time. So um, there's another question here, um, and if you have any questions, please feel feel free to to put it in there. Um, could you varnish the copper copper before painting? It might provide a two. Is it okay to paint on top of varnish? That's a, that's a very, very interesting question. We actually get this a lot. Um, I think a lot of artists, when they start painting on it, they think on the copper, they think that it's going to be very slick. But when, once you start working on it, it seems, it seems like the surface tension is actually not as slick as, as uh, it looks because it's so shiny. But, um, but to increase the, uh, the, the surface tension, you, what we suggest is putting just a little bit of oil on it or maybe oleo gel, which is a natural thickness product we recommend. You can put a little oleo gel to create a little more of that surface tension to it. You can, of course, sand it as well. Um, varnishing, particularly, we don't recommend that as a process. Um, but I would say, you know, you can refer back to the uh, manufacturers of the varnishes, and maybe they'll be able to to help you uh, help you with that process. I don't know. Uh, I know you varnish afterwards. You've never varnished beforehand, right? Is that am I correct in that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I um, did apply oleo gel before, uh, so that makes it very sleek and, you know, it, it, it's nice to, uh, to work into it. But now yeah. I don't apply anything at all. I just... You paint directly on it? I paint directly. Yeah. 
Yeah, and, and, and I know the, the article you're, you're referring to, Candace. Uh, I think it was Candace who came out with that article. Um, Candace Bohannon and Julia Reyes are both ambassadors for our brand as well. They, they're really knowledgeable. Their blog is great. And they did have, yeah, they had a great, uh, they use our panels as well. I'm not sure if they use our copper panel specifically, but I know they have in the, in the past. Um, so they, they talk about putting garlic on the surface. Now, it will, will probably increase the surface tension, but it doesn't, uh, but just because old masters did that, that process, there's, uh, there's we, don't, we have no evidence showing that it protects the surface or anything like that, which some people think, uh, but it might increase the, uh, the, uh, the surface tension. I would say though, if you are just looking for service tension, if that's your main goal, just go with oil, that's gonna be the best. Um, the less complicated your paintings are, the better. Okay, this is, if, if, you know, this is something that we always talk about in terms of longevity, just in terms of in general, just, just having consi consistent practice. If you have the least amount of things in your paints, least amount of different components in your, in your materials of, of any kind, it's gonna be better uh, for, for the longevity of your work. So. Uh, so if you're not adding varnish, oil, pigment, varnish, you know, if you're having all these different layers, there's a lot more points where it, where your paintings could fail. Um, and for, to that, I would actually suggest there's a really good uh, good uh, uh, website called paintingbestpractices.com. If you've ever been there, check it out. They have a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of uh, different things that they talk about increasing longevity of your work. You can also join Painting Best Practices Facebook group, another really good resource. If you're not Currently following them, you can ask questions on there. It's a really nice, nice forum to to get some answers on that. So, Sinead, I hope I answered your question there. Um, and uh, I think I'm not sure. I don't see any other questions. I hope I'm not missing anybody, Olga. I'm, I don't. And I'm not sure if there's any other questions there. But um, but feel free to message. I mean, I I have uh, many artists just have a conversation offline as well. So I'll try to answer anything or refer to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yes, Olga, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, yeah. I think this is going to conclude uh, uh, the, the, the short discussion that we had. I'm sure there's a lot more we can talk about. Maybe we'll have another talk at some point soon. Um, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. If you're on Facebook Live or on, on YouTube or, or on the, the Vision X Live. Um, this is, like I said, this is the first event of, of uh, the three that we're going to be doing. And they're actually all going to fit together. Tomorrow, we're gonna to be talking to the teacher of Bosley. And during that discussion, we're gonna have, uh, half of it is actually gonna be on our current testing. So we have preliminary testing on materials. So materials, so for instance, all painting materials. Right now we have ACM panels. We also have wood products like plywoods, hardwoods, MDF, MDO, all these, and then copper panels, and then, and then all different kinds in between competitor panels as well. So tomorrow we're gonna to actually delve deep into this, this research showing accelerated age testing, warping, uh, different problems that could happen from relative humidity. And we're gonna have copper panels in there. So if you, have, if you wanted to know a little bit more about, about actual testing on the copper and how it reacts to relative humidity over time, tomorrow we're gonna to discuss that in detail and it's gonna fit in right into what, what we talked about today. Um, so everybody, Thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And I hope we hope to see you soon tomorrow. Olga, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.